Have them on the table! Go! Paramore! Self-titled! It's just Paramore. Yeah. I feel like this album is the polarizing album of Paramore. It's like, you either like it or you don't like it. I don't know. That's the way, that's the reaction that I've gotten from a lot of other people that have called themselves Paramore fans. And it seems like most of them that there are a lot of people that love it and a lot of people that hate it. But I don't meet enough people that are like middle of the road. Like I like a few songs because this is definitely way different than say like Brand New Eyes or Riot. Well, that was the album right before, Brand New Eyes. Yeah. Now, what I love so much about this album is basically one, two, three, four, five, six. Basically, the first six songs, boom, 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 boom. It's like a punch in the face of, yeah, these two people left our band, and I'm mad about it. It's like, it doesn't even give you a minute off. So it's probably like 30 minutes of punch to the face. Okay, probably 20 minutes. But anyway, the point is 20 to 25 minutes of you feel exactly all those emotions that must have went through them as they were writing this, you know, going from five people to three people. And I love it. Yeah. The best thing about this album is none of the songs sound the same. That's true. But they all fit together. They definitely fit together. The little interludes are super cool. Even though I hate ukulele. Yeah, Sean's not a really big uke fan, but it's kind of... And actually seeing this concert was really cool how, you know, they're on this huge stage, but then doing the interludes, they go off to the the side of the stage and it's almost like a um snapshot into a coffee house gig mm -hmm. where it's just we're gonna play some acoustic instruments on this corner of the stage mm -hmm. yeah this okay well the first single that came out on this before the album was released was now yeah how'd you feel about that when you heard it i i loved it i thought it was perfect I, there's not much that I can say about that song other than as a, as a good pop rock song, it's virtually perfect. Um, I probably would have made some choices like produ just production wise about it because, you know, I kind of listen with that ear as well as a fan's ear, but there's not much about it that needed to be changed there. And it was the perfect it was the perfect first single. It was absolutely perfect. It said everything about what this album was going to be in f five minutes or less. Yeah. And you couldn't have, even if they probably wrote the song and listened to it and like, that's the first single. So they could have planned it. You know, it probably was planned. It definitely was planned. This is a business, so things get planned. But you couldn't have planned it better. You could not. And even if you tried to plan it better, it still couldn't have gone better than it did. I mean, maybe. But the song was perfect. It said exactly what the album's purpose was. And it was, it's a rallying cry. You know? It's, it's leaving the past in the past and going forward to find the future that you're, you're looking for. And... And you've had enough of yeah. the past and you want the future now. You're tired of waiting. Yeah, you're tired of waiting. You're tired of putting in the effort. You're tired of expelling too much energy and wasting it. And it, I can't say it enough. It said exactly what it needed to say. It put the album into a context and it kind of, it surprises me, but it, it doesn't upset me that it's not the first song on the record because it's just such a perfect, like it starts with just the drummer counting them in with a four count. And it's just like, that's so, that's such a raw way to start a song 
just a loud like and just you're in it and you're listening to it that's like that could have easily started and it would just been like oh hey we're ready okay i'm i'm right there with you but i think the fact that it, it is song number two it's probably like the first song gets you ready for it yeah now is definitely a punch in the face yeah. i feel that and then I remember when I first listened to this, you know, when I got the album, I put in the CD in the car. And as soon as Ain't It Fun came on, I was just in it. Uh -huh. It was, I said, oh my gosh, it's Paramore does Michael Jackson. It was so, there was so much MJ feel to that with the, the, the riff, the, rhythm. the main guitar riff. There's a lot of very... Michael Jackson, Quincy Jones, like production wise to it, the parts to it, the gospel the, choir, yeah, in it. the rhythms and the voice. It is definitely one of those songs that listening to it, you're like, oh man, makes me wish Michael was still yeah. here. Makes me Truly. wish Michael was still here just so that you would be able to dream in your head. Like there might be a possibility that this could be a collaboration that would happen and it would be so cool to see, but there's no chance of seeing it. But this got the, I mean, you can't argue with, with this album in my book because, you know, a lot of people will probably want to Paramore to go back to, you know, their more warp tour based sound where it was much more pop punk and emo rather than, you know, pop rock and slightly mainstream but i could easily i could easily see them still playing a couple dates on the warp tour and fitting perfectly fine i i felt like with the feeling with this album was oh they don't sound like themselves i'm like no they sound like themselves they just got rid of the dead weight and i feel like this it wasn't necessarily that they're trying to change their sound is maybe um, experimenting yeah. with some, you know, more synths and just well, going outside of their box. When you lose two members and quite, you know, unceremoniously lose two members that played an integral role in the overall sound of the band, you kind of have to take stock of what you still have. And then you kind of need to find out is it possible for us to do what we had done previously with just us? And I think it was a, a really good idea for them to choose the producer they chose. And it, it's uh, Justin Meldell Johnson, who's the bass player for Beck. And he also played with Nine Inch Nails. And he's, he's worked with a ton of people. But he has a very uh, different approach to... You know, just music in general, because he lives in a slightly more avant-garde world. He does things and plays music that is less conventional. So he's willing to experiment with things, and he likes that exploratory uh, nature of music, of trying to find and craft a sound. And I think that he was a, a perfect choice, and the best thing that he probably did for this record was bringing in Ilan Rubin to play drums, who had played with Nine Inch Nails. He has his band, The New Regime. Um, he's played with Angels and Airwaves, too. But for me, it's like the fact that he's playing drums, because he's one of my favorite drummers. And I felt like the drum sounds and the way that the drums were played for this particular record are a vast improvement over Brand New Eyes. Because for me, Brand New Eyes, and why I like this album so much, Brand New Eyes to me sounds like an album of a band at war. It sounds like a band where you can sense who's on which side of the war, and then oftentimes there are points where it's like, every member is fighting each other so they don't remember what it was like to work together and work as a unit and then when the drummer and guitar player left and there was all this hullabaloo it was very clear to me like 
Okay, now I understand why the drummer was trying to get in all his stuff, and he wanted it all over the place, and he <laughs> wanted to play as much as he possibly could, and he wanted to do this, and he wanted to do that. And then it's just like, to listen to this, and it's just like, solid, and just like, the groove was there. He was playing the parts the songs needed. It just, it made it all the better. And that, that's a, that's another point that I think I can make with this. This album shows a band in distress, trying to find who they are, but willing to be okay with leaving behind the past. And I think that's evidence the most in the last song, Future. Oh yeah, that's true. That's such an interesting way of putting this on this album. It's like they start out with, with like a an, demo, yeah. it feels like. And then it kind of morphs into a more, uh, you know... Super produced, like, spacey... Instrumental. Yeah. But it's really, really cool. Yeah. It, and it kind of gives you that feeling of... What is next? We don't know. Yeah. They're just, as they say, writing it out. Yeah. No, like this, this to me is like a triumph for them. And anybody who thinks otherwise, you know, just get out. <laughs> just get out. So, Paramore, self-titled album. Get it if you don't have it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Let us know if you love this album.